What's going on, everybody? I'm Isaiah, and today I want to take the time out to talk about Max Wells and Bria album. This year marks 20 years since its release back in 1998, June 30th. Um, this album, when it first came out, it, it threw a lot of people off guard. This album, you know, is considered one of those records that's very much so timeless, um, ahead of its time. And I know, I know, you know, when it came out for people, it could have been considered as this sophomore jinx or what have you. But um, real heads get what Maxwell was doing at that time. Uh, this album is very experimental, um, you know, the instrumentation, um, the, the musical part of this album is just phenomenal. Um, you know, you get a lot more strings going on in the music, a lot more heavy bass lines. Um, the lyrical content, man, is just, of course, it's just, you know, typical Maxwell, man, just doing incredible stuff as usual. This album from top to bottom is just a masterpiece. I mean, you know, um, from the first track, you know, I must say the sequencing on this album is just perfect. You know, you have the beginning, the, um, the intro is just like this, this taking you through this motion of, you know, liquid and, and water and there's this chattering going on and then it goes into ever wanting and then it's just that like everything about this album is just super funky soulful like it's everything man and you know and i can get why it, it was such a hard pill for you know for people to swallow because you know when you look at urban and um and Ambria, there's nothing to like you know that's a huge departure from what he did with urban compared to you know Ambria. and you kind of get a taste of where he was going and forgive me I, I don't know how to say this name shout out to gerard this is you know your favorite song of all time but i i don't want to mess up the name but the name the song actually comes from the the red hot uh rio compilation uh so if you know that song that i'm talking about and the name comes across your mind think about the direction that he was taking with that song because if if people you know because it's very deep into maxwell's catalog if when you hear that song you it would really take you by surprise not many people even acknowledge or address that song or whatever but when you listen to that song you could kind of tell that's where he was going and um and i kind of heard some speculation that this album you know getting the reviews that it it did um it kind of led to a tour being canceled you know the whole sophomore jinx thing you know whatever um kind of you know made his career take a hit um but of course he bounced back uh the year late the, the next year with with fortunate so um I think for me, for me, I look at it as a win-win anyway for that brother because this album, you know, it may have not have, you know, got all this attention, you know, when it first came out. But 20 years later, you know, I see people on Twitter talking about how this is Maxwell's best album out of everything that he's done. Um, 
you know, and I, I compare Summers to Embria a lot because those two albums is really where Maxwell stepped out of this box and said, you know what, hey, this, this is what I can do. And when you look at Embria and Summers and, you know, put them together, that's what they are. They are this amazing, beautiful pieces of art that people might not have appreciated at the time. Because I'm going to tell you this, people are going to come back to Summers and they're going to be like, okay, I got you. Because, you know, Maxwell has been known to push the envelope, you know, in his career. You know, it wouldn't surprise me. So that's all I have to say about this amazing, beautiful album. Um, let me know what you think of it and how you'll be celebrating 20 years of this masterpiece. So until then, much love. God bless. Peace.